<sighs> my RAM's first parasitic draw issue, but there's an upgrade for that. Nope. Nope. Yep. Dibs. This RAM has a problem, a very rammed in problem. Uh, it leaks. It leaks power and no one seems to know why. Does it do it when I take it to the dealer for a week and a half? Nope. Does it do it when it's time to go to an important appointment? Yep. Dead. I mean, not completely dead. The interior lights and power locks and radio and instrument cluster still works, but there's just not enough little V's to feed the starter. So what do we do about this? Well, there's three likely suspects. The instrument cluster. However, I never see this staying on. The radio. However, this doesn't seem to be waking up either, or even momentarily flashing awake, as an electrical specialist from the dealer said to watch out for. And the tip -em. This is generally a suspect of Mopar vehicles because they've done something interesting. The fuel pump relay is actually located internally and soldered directly on the main board. It's a cold and windy day, so I'm going to go ahead and pull the truck into the garage. Let's get started. Now, sometimes these fuel pump relays randomly get stuck on, causing the fuel pump to run even after the key is turned off, thus draining the battery. And I cannot definitively say this is the issue. However, it's the least expensive item that I can try. And why not? This gives me a chance to upgrade. So I bought this unit from Max. It's an exact replacement. But why do I call it an upgrade? Well, for several reasons. First of all, I want to make it clear that I'm not sponsored by Max, or actually any company for that matter. This is my own review and I spent my own money on this. Max doesn't even know I'm doing this review, yet. From the Max website, they say that each of these tipums are rebuilt to a quality better than new. Now how is this possible? Well, for one, they test and scrutinize everything. All the relays, the condition of the circuitry, and even bench test each unit before they're completed. But most interestingly, they replace the old mechanical fuel pump relays with their new solid state relays. That's right, no mechanical clicking on and off, nothing to get stuck, and they claim that these will actually outlast the life of your vehicle. So why not? The mechanical relay will go bad eventually, so let's hedge our bets and replace it now. Note that this doesn't come with a lid unless you pay extra for one. We're just going to reuse our old one. And before we begin, Let's also make sure the fuses are in the right places. There's a lot of variations in these trucks, so mine may have an accessory that the original did not. I'm also going to make sure that each of these relays and fuses are seated properly. This one right here, it did seat a little better, so it may have come loose during shipping. That's why it's important to go through all of these to make sure they're seated properly. This relay over here had the same problem. That's okay, we're just going to gently push it back in. It's less likely fuses are going to have the same problems, but I'm going to go to each anyways. Uh, this one was also not quite seated all the way. Uh, that's all right, just a light press and we can feel it seat all the way down to the bottom. And this one had the same problem right here. And now we're going to make sure that all the fuses are the same between the two units. If this one has a fuse that the other one does not, then I'm going to go ahead and place the fuse from this box into this one. Easy enough. Okay, so I carefully compared the two tipums, and it does look like all the fuses are in the exact same places. So let's go ahead and remove the old one and get the new one in. First, I'm going to take off the lid, just like that. What I did is just push down on these two hinge tabs from the back side. Next, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the negative battery terminal. I did replace the battery in attempts to figure out where the problem was. Of course, that didn't turn out to be the case. But it doesn't hurt to have a new one anyways, because the old one was the original from the factory. I'm going to place something between the battery cable and the post so it doesn't accidentally make contact. Now, we'll go ahead and disconnect power from the tip -um. Move that cable aside. To remove the tip -um, I'm going to push these two tabs from the front side and just move it up a little bit. And there should be two tabs from the back side as well. I'm going to push those in and pull it up a bit. You kind of got to wrestle this back and forth to inch it up. There we go. Now we can carefully work this up so we can get to the wiring harnesses at the bottom. Things are a little bit stiff in here because it's never been out before. So you have to be gentle with this step. And from the bottom side here, we can see how the wiring harnesses are secured. We'll start in the back with the easy ones. These just have a little locking tab you can press to release. For the main harnesses, you release the white locking mechanism and rock it back. And then you have to bring it back until it clicks. Then the harness should just come right out. Let's grab the next one. There we go. And then just pull it straight out. That one's free. Sometimes these can tend to come out unevenly. So after releasing the white latch, Push the harness back in again and then remove it as straight as possible. And just like that, here's our old tip -um. If you're looking for the part number on these, it's on the back side of the tip -um. When I was checking for the replacement number, I did carefully lift this up just enough from the casing to get that number. To put the new one in, all the plugs only go in one way, so there's only one way to do it. Make sure that's in. 
locking mechanism back up, pull on it to make sure everything's seated correctly, click this locking mechanism back up, make sure that's seated. ahead and hook the main power back to the tip them like this put the nut on there's no need to over tighten this that should be good right there by the way if you're wondering what this is this is a little fuse puller they put in the tip them not just this one but it comes on the stock ones as well if you ever see that yellow thing poking up well now you know what that is for the next step, it says to go ahead and reconnect the battery cables. I did just the negative, but it's recommended to remove both of them. Before I do that, I want to go ahead and make sure that all these relays and fuses are seated again. When I was putting it back in, I did put a little bit of strain on the top of this panel, even though I was trying not to. So it's a good practice to make sure everything is still seated. Everything seems to be solid on here, so we're good to go. Let's go ahead and hook power back up to the vehicle by putting the negative lead back onto the battery. A few little sparklies because the vehicle does draw power even when it's off. Also the hood light is on. Let's go ahead and make sure we have this secured. Squatch tip. Before attempting to start the vehicle, make sure you have everything out of the way here. All your tools, parts, cell phones, anything you might have left up top here. Just to make sure that nothing gets caught up in the engine and makes even a bigger mess. When they ship these tip ums out, the VIN is not yet encoded on it so it gives your vehicle a chance to write this to the module. So that's what the soft reset procedure is for. So in order to do this, we're going to go ahead and turn the key to the on position. Turn that off. Leave us here for about 12 seconds. This should allow the tip on to be synchronizing with the vehicle. We're going to turn it off and then we're going to go ahead and do it again. For another 12 seconds. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and look at the dash for any warning lights. Of course, the check engine light will be on when the key is on and the vehicle is not running. Just ignore that for now. Nothing seems to be coming up so far, so I think we're good. On the Mopar vehicles, if there was anything severely wrong, it will come right up in the instrument cluster. Let's go ahead and see if we can start the vehicle. There we go. That's good news. It does seem to be running fine, and again, I'm not seeing any other warnings coming from the dash here. Let's go ahead and go through our system to make sure everything works. Obviously the radio is working. That's on. Let's check the headlights. Yep, those are working. Brights are working. Let's go and check the windshield wipers. Those are working fine. Windshield wiper pump. That's fine. Of course this was working earlier. If we turn the AC on. I can hear the modes changing here and I can hear the compressor coming on underneath the hood. Everything's running quiet here. I don't hear the engine stuttering or anything. I don't hear any weird noises or clicks or anything else. So it looks like we got everything done properly. Let's go ahead and put the lid back on and get this thing buttoned up. Pretty easy to put the lid back on. We just got to go ahead and line up these tabs or these hinges to the new tip. Just kind of push down gently. Careful this is plastic. Close it. Make sure these two latches are closed. Bam, we're done. Let's go ahead and take it out for a test drive to see how it does. Automatic door locks just worked. That's a good sign. Everything seems to be running well. I don't see any issues with it. Well, time will tell if this is actually the right fix for the vehicle or not. We do have some negative 20 degree days coming up here with a lot of snow. Sometimes that seems to be what triggered some of these issues. So we'll see if it stays charged up. I do work from home so I don't drive the vehicle every day anymore. So it'll give it a good chance for it to sit a few days. See if the, the fuel pump stays engaged or not. Or if, I guess that's not going to be a problem anymore. Yeah, but for now everything seems to be working. I'll be crossing my fingers that that was the problem. And I'll keep you guys posted if anything else comes up. On a scale of between 1 and 10 for the non-technical person, this is probably about a 5 or a 6. But for a technical person or a handyman, I'd give us about a two. Just gotta be patient and take things slow and make sure you follow the instructions. Max also has a core buyback program. So if you're not gonna hang on to this, go ahead and send it back into them. They'll take it back, completely disassemble it, fix any problems they see, including bad relays. And of course, they'll fix that ominous fuel pump relay. 
You'll get some cash back and you'll know that you might be helping somebody else down the road with a similar problem. And that's all we have time for today. Please consider subscribing for more videos like this. We do a variety of things on this channel such as RV upgrades and repair, tool and product reviews, and recently we just started a new mini-series for our new 6x10 cargo adventure trailer. As always, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.